Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, I'm Jeff Ross. I'm one of the associate pastors here at the church. If I haven't met you, it's good to meet you uh, and be here with you this morning. Uh, our scripture passage is from Matthew uh, chapter 5, part of the Sermon on the Mount, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? It is good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a light, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on the top of a lampstand and it shines for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. So this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, I think that maybe as much as anything uh, in Scripture, the Sermon on the Mount is helpful for some of the things that are going on around us today. And so that's what I want us to kind of look, like, look at this morning. I want to look at this passage, but I also want to look at the context and what Jesus was trying to accomplish and uh, what was going on uh, with that. And so, um, again, it's good to be with you. Uh, uh, Joe is uh, over across the way this morning at confirmation with his child. We've got Uh, a large group of uh, folks in confirmation. I imagine that some of the folks that are regular in Chapel Roswell are down there this morning uh, as well. So Joe looks forward to being back next week and leading us through uh, Thanksgiving and and Advent, Christmas, and and going through uh, all of those things. And so um, the Sermon on the Mount, It's interesting that uh, as Jesus is uh, having this conversation with people, who he's talking to, who he's not talking to, who he's talking about, and who he's kind of referencing. And so I want to try to get you for just a second to kind of put yourself in uh, in that sort of mindset as to what's, what's going on and who is he talking about. Jesus says a number of times throughout the Sermon on the Mount, Sermon on the Mount is Matthew chapter 5 uh, and 6, uh, and it um, uh, starts off with the Beatitudes, uh, it ends with seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will fall into place, which is sort of a summary of what's in these two chapters. But it's interesting as he goes through this Sermon on the Mount that uh, he, he uses a phrase often, you have heard it said, but then I say. And so he's referencing something that was pretty popular and pretty common and something that people knew, but he's offering a new way forward in the midst of it. And so that's, that's what I want to dig into a little bit. The Pharisees and Sadducees uh, were the religious leaders at the time, and, uh, and they had put a sort of heavy yoke on people about what they're supposed to do. Faith was all action-oriented. Do this, do this, do this. Don't do this, do this, do this. Don't do that. Oh, oh don't go over there. You'll get into a lot of trouble. And, and so Jesus is, is coming to say it's more than just this list of things to do. Because folks were like going nuts trying to keep up with everything they were supposed to do and not do. And, you know, can I do this on this day or that day? Or what are, how do I respond to this situation in my life? And, and, and folks were just uh, going nuts on that. And so Jesus is trying to help people keep up with that. So uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Jesus is talking in, in sort of a, a new way. Uh, and, he's, and he's having to do that. Because the religious leaders at the time aren't really talking to people. They aren't really listening to people. And so part of the uh, draw of Jesus, and it says a couple of times that Jesus talks uh, as somebody who has, has authority or is charismatic or, wow, listen to this. It was things that Jesus was saying that the, the religious leaders of the day weren't saying. And so I'm, I'm not so sure that he, he was saying new things, he was just saying it a little different way, because right after this uh, 16th verse, Jesus goes into a little soliloquy about how he didn't come to, to take away anything in the law, but he came to help us understand it and put it all in perspective better. 
And so that's the, the kind of struggle uh, that, that Jesus is trying to interact with. The, the Pharisees aren't listening. They aren't uh, uh, paying attention to people. Uh, they're talking to each other about things they think amongst themselves, Pharisees and Sadducees, the two religious leading groups. Uh, they're, taking, they're debating about who's right about certain issues in the world, but it's, it's not really something that other people are paying attention to, uh, and they've gotten caught up in themselves. Uh, and so Jesus uh, uh, comes, and he recognizes that the Pharisees and Sadducees are taking people this way. And Jesus comes, and one of the first things that Jesus says, if you go back a chapter into chapter 4, is repent. Uh, and repent means stop doing things that you're not supposed to do, but it also means you're going the wrong way. Uh, you're headed off in this direction, so come turn around and follow me. So Jesus is, in essence, saying, repent, follow me in a new way. And he's challenging or standing up against the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, and uh, the folks that are... Uh, are, are kind of leading people in that day. And so uh, a great example is, is just this area right here. Uh, in the midst of church, in the midst of a sanctuary, uh, just imagine the Pharisees and Sadducees being in this place. And, and imagine maybe the Pharisees are on this side and the Sadducees are on this side and they're having a debate uh, about some theological question or problem. Uh, and, and maybe you've come to worship today uh, to seek uh, more guidance and direction for your life or to seek wisdom about the scriptures or uh, because you're struggling with something that's going on in your life or you're just wanting to draw closer to God or, or with each other. You're trying to figure out how scripture and, and church and God makes a difference in your life. And so you've come with real questions about how you live out your faith and, and, and worship that day is about these folks arguing some minor point about theology that's just kind of like way up there. And so that's, that's, what, that's what religious life in Jesus' day was like. The Pharisees and Sadducees are trying to prove to each other who's right about issues that don't matter to most people. And so the congregation or the town or the people uh, that are gathered to come and listen uh, uh, around what's happening here uh, in this place are just going, that, that's not helpful. And so, and so the danger is in the church today, a lot of that takes place too. A lot of church speak is about stuff that really isn't where folks are. Uh, we've just finished an election cycle. And I, I, I'm imagining that you're as relieved that that's at least sort of over uh, as much as it can be for a while. Because it's just a lot of stuff about things that, that uh, some of the things that, that really, really, that's, that's what we're going to talk about or fight about. And, and so uh, in our world today, there's a lot of that too, where the people that are on the inside of this thing that's supposed to serve and help people are busy talking to themselves about who's right and who's wrong and not listening or paying attention to where most folks are and what's really important or what would be helpful in moving us forward. And that's the danger of being on the inside. That's the danger of being a part of a, 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 a political group or a, a theological group or an economic group or any of those things. Or, or actually just kind of living today. We get in little bubbles uh, that, and, and it's more, again, important that we're right sometimes than listening or communicating. And so Jesus is addressing that here in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus has come to to uh, point out to people that God is paying attention to where they are and wanting to lead them forward. Again, Jesus says, repent, follow me, come this way. You're being led the wrong way, and I want to kind of help you go in the right way. So, so what does that look like? Uh, we, we tend to get, sometimes want information for information's sake, uh, but then what do we do with that information that's helpful? And sometimes we get in a conversation and we want to share this great information that we have. And so we're so busy thinking of our response that we're not paying attention to the people uh, that we're talking to. And so Jesus doesn't want us to get sucked into that. And so he offers two 
really good illustrations. This whole idea of salt and this whole idea of light. And so, again, kind of put yourself in Jesus' day. A salt was a valuable uh, commodity. Uh, it was something that people had to have. And then light, uh, just again, in Jesus' day, there weren't street lights. There wasn't all the electricity that we have. When it got dark, it got dark. And, and a candle uh, in, in a big, dark place is a little bit of light, but it's not great light. And so when Jesus talks about being light and being salt, uh, that was uh, maybe something that folks connected to uh, a little bit more. Salt inhibits the growth of microorganisms uh, by drawing water out of whatever the salt is put on. So concentrations of salt, say up to 20%, uh, are required to kill unwanted bacteria. So beef jerky. How many of y'all eat beef jerky? All right, good. So beef jerky is just sort of meat that has been dried and salt added uh, so that it can just kind of be a stick of meat that uh, can kind of last for a while. Uh, you don't have to refrigerate it or cook it any certain way. You just uh, dehydrate it, salt it, and then it's, you know, stick it in your pocket and munch on it whenever you get, whenever you get hungry. And, um, uh, it, it, uh, and, 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 but the salt prevents the decay, right? It prevents the, the, the meat from drying out or being bad, uh, gets rid of the things that make the meat turn bad, and so it gets rid of the decay. So in Jesus' day, that would have made a ton of sense to people because they were used to you know, preserving meats and things uh, with the use of salt, maybe more than we do that today. I don't know if any of the folks that raise their hand about eating beef jerky make their own. Uh, my son-in-law does, uh, but I, I, I don't know a lot of folks that do that. Uh, but uh, if, you're, if you're doing that on a regular basis, then it maybe makes more sense. But uh, the salt draws out the impurities so that the meat doesn't decay. And that's what Jesus is trying to say with this idea of salt. How do we come into situations and, and how do we live within our community? How do we live within the places where we go and help draw out the decay? Help draw out or, or keep away the things that just lead to all of the chaos and frustration, anger, and back and forth uh, that's going on. How do we enter into those conversations? How do we model that? Because Jesus, again, he, he's talking about how we move forward. And, and maybe it's important to note that the Sermon on the Mount was not a mass sermon to everybody. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a, a voice to people who were beginning to follow Jesus, who were, who were wanting to follow, or who were wanting to turn from the way they were going, who recognized, this isn't helpful. Uh, what, what I'm being offered over here isn't, isn't really helping me much. I want to go in a new way. There's got to be a new way. There's got to be a way to connect to God that I'm not being taught over here. So the people that Jesus was talking to and using these illustrations with are folks that are turning or in process of turning and are heading in this new direction. Uh, one of the things that our senior pastor, Tom Davis, is talking about as far as a sort of a, a vision or, or a path for the church is to try to help wanderers uh, become followers and followers become disciples. And so that's a, a path of, of moving people in this continuum. So uh, this, this message isn't for everybody, but it is for folks who are there's got to be something more, and there's got to be a way to do that. So how do I do that? So Jesus is saying, you folks that are passionate and concerned and, and that aren't concerned about all this stuff that the Pharisees and Sadducees are fighting over, there is a way, and you can be a part of that. You. So, so Jesus is leaning on, and, and this is really important too, uh, Jesus is leaning on not the religious leaders of his day, uh, and every time I talk about the Pharisees and Sadducees, I get a little bit, oh, man. Uh, because in our day, if Jesus were to come, that, that's who I would be. Uh, I'm the Pharisee or Sadducee. I'm the, one of the religious leaders. I'm an ordained clergy person. And so when Jesus comes, he doesn't come to the, the ministerial meeting of the pastors of the North Georgia Conference. 
of the United Methodist Church. He comes to uh, folks out in the pews. He comes to folks in uh, the countryside. He comes to folks where they work, and he says, you people can lead us forward. That's really indicting of, of the church and the organizations and some of the things that we've created. But that's what Jesus does. He comes and he says, you can help us forward. If you'll be salt, if you'll help pull out the decay uh, that, that's, uh, that exists in the world today. And, and, and then he goes on to say, but you are also light. Uh, and maybe for some of us, that's a better image. We can grab hold of that uh, better than the salt image. And light is an interesting thing. You know, how many of y'all have ever uh, washed your clothes and put it on a line out in the backyard? Okay, a few of y'all. Uh, so that's a thing that we used to do that we don't do a whole lot anymore. But do you know that if you put your clothes on a clothesline in the backyard, let the sun dry them, that the sun takes away some of the bacteria, some of the mold, some of the stuff that's in your clothes. The ultraviolet rays of the sun is actually a cleansing, healing thing. And so light has this property about it, sunlight, ultraviolet rays, have this property about it that, again, does sort of the same thing as the salt. It cleanses, it heals, uh, it brings a freshness, it takes away some of the things that don't belong in those places. And so uh, ultraviolet uh, rays can kill germs that it comes in contact with. And so it wasn't just a convenience thing necessarily as much as it was a, a practical way of how do we get the clothes not just clean, uh, but so that they don't uh, carry over uh, diseases or anything they might have come into contact with. So light overcomes the darkness and the salt overcomes this Decay. So Jesus is pointing us in a new direction. Again, he's asking folks uh, that are willing to lean into this new way of, of thinking and living. He, he gives them some practical steps about how to do that. And so, again, as you go through the Sermon on the Mount, the, Jesus ends with this idea of seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will find its right place. And so, again... Jesus is pointing us in a, in a new direction. So how, how in a world like what we live in can we be salt and light? Uh, how do we enter in to some of the, the fray that's around us uh, without being like, you know, just obnoxious or self-righteous or... Oh, gosh, is, are they going to talk again? All they ever do is just quote, you know, how do we, how do we enter in those conversations without, uh, you know, just kind of making them worse sometimes? Um, and so I want us to look at, 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 the, at, at how Jesus takes this a little bit. It seems to me that Jesus had two things in mind when he made these statements. And as he's leading people forward in this new direction, he has two things in mind. Uh, and one is, it, it seems that's where a lot of folks go first and, and then stop, uh, is this idea of how are we going to uh, demonstrate our faith or how are we going to act it out. So a little bit later in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus talks about the sheep and the goats, and he, he makes the statement about, when have you seen me in prison, or when have you seen me without food, or when have you seen me naked, or, or when have you seen me uh, in some sort of trouble or peril, uh, and, um, uh, and you did something about it. You didn't just say, oh, bless his heart, uh, but you actually got up and, and helped. He said that action is what he was calling us to, uh, to respond. Uh, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And so those are action-oriented. So you bring salt and light into those situations, and you do something. And I think it's important for us to do something. I get, I get frustrated when I uh, talk to people who are passionate about some cause, uh, but their passion is limited to uh, emails and copying and pasting emails, sending them to folks or, or Twitters or, or, or tweets or, or Instagram posts. That, that their, their whole world of action is, is related to that as opposed to getting up and doing something. 
And so Jesus is, is talking about action where we go and do and help and, and get involved, and that's important. But what Jesus is calling us to isn't just action. And, 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 and what I mean by that is I can do things, but it doesn't mean that in the action of doing that thing that I actually feel anything. It, maybe somebody says, hey, go with me to this event or this thing. And so I go and I can check it off my list and say I went to that. But has that made any sort of difference in my life? And I think that's where Jesus is, is uh, offering something additional. Because the, the whole world of church in Jesus' day is a list of things to do. Remember the fellow that comes up to Jesus asking about salvation and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And so the question in Jesus' day and the question in our day often is boiled down or reduced to what must I do? Tell me the thing or things I must do. I must uh, go to church once a month. I must, uh, you know, help a, a poor person once every two weeks. You know, we want a, a prescription of things to do, and then we do those things and say, okay, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. But that's, that's not what Jesus wants. And again, Jesus is talking to folks who want to move in a new direction, and, and maybe it's not everybody all at once. Maybe God is working in on us in different ways, and sometimes action leads to a, a difference of opinion in a heart. Uh, sometimes our heart moves first, and that moves us into action. So uh, not sure which way things in your life most, most happen, but um, both parts are important to Jesus. So he says this salt and light should lead to action. We should be salt and light. I mean, we should do something. But, but for Jesus, the Pharisees and Sadducees are so focused on just doing the right things. Uh, all of Jesus' conflicts with the Pharisees and Sadducees are that Jesus did something wrong on the wrong day, at the wrong time, in the wrong way. It's all action-oriented. And Jesus... Ah, he, he just scratches his head and, and walks off and, and counts to ten before he responds uh, because the Pharisees and Sadducees don't feel it. They're just doing it. And so the second part of where Jesus wants us to get to is that it's part of our heart. It's part of who we are. That, that, so the, the way to respond in situations where everything's just blowing up and we're in the middle of that and trying to figure out what to say, sometimes it's not what we say, but it's who we are. Sometimes it's not what we say, but it's what we represent. It's how we've lived our lives. It's what we stand for. Uh, sometimes the, what's the most important is the character that we have, and that's born out of a heart that's in the right place with God. And so it's not just important the things that we do, but it's the heart that we have. When they press Jesus as to what the greatest commandment is, he says it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then you'll treat your neighbor in the right way as yourself. So love God, love neighbor, but love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. What Jesus is after is a transformation of our heart. If you look all the way through the Old and New Testament, the people that follow God and that God uses are people whose heart uh, is transformed. Their whole life is about how to live and follow God in the right way. And I think that's what sometimes we miss, that we're a good churchgoer or we're a good Methodist, or we're a good Christian even, in that we do religious things, we do Christian things, we do Methodist things, we do uh, 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 faithful things. But there's a, a difference between doing and feeling, doing and believing. Uh, and so the confirmation class that's uh, next door this morning is a process of trying to talk to, uh, I guess most of them are 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, about how they have learned about God and Jesus Christ, but now how they walk in this new life. And I think that's the challenge constantly for us. 
How can we be salt, not just do salty things? How can we be light and not just light up, turn on some light that we have with the phrases uh, or the bumper stickers or the T-shirts that we have? Let us pray. God, our faith grows out of actions. And sometimes our actions grow out of experiences. And it's not simple and it's not easy. And being the right person sometimes isn't just doing right things. But it's a transformation of heart that where we begin to follow you in, in all the areas of our life. And so guide us, God, in what that means to follow you. Lead us, help us. Uh, In the midst of all the noise around us, God, guide us in what it means to look to you. What it means to move from being a wanderer to a follower, from a follower to a disciple. Help us, God, take that next step. Give us leaders, mentors, your word, and your spirit to give guidance and direction as to what that is. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Continue in worship this morning. One of the ways that we worship is with uh, sharing the gifts and graces that God has given us. And so uh, you can see the different ways that you can give Uh, to the church. Uh, uh, Offering baskets are at some of the doors on the way out, uh, but there are other ways to give as well. God, we pray your blessings uh, on our gifts, on our time and our talents and our resources, that you would use us and them for your kingdom. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.